Okay. Moto G22. Let's get this thing unboxed and see what we get for £140. What's good people, Tech Jammer, welcome back to the channel. And if it's your first time and you like the content, make sure you hit the like, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the future upcoming videos. Now, before I go any further, can I give a big, big shout out to the guys at Motorola, Lenovo and Free Monkeys for inviting me to this posh event in London and hooking me up with one of these Moto G22s for myself. You can find out more about Motorola and Lenovo in the links in the description section below. But anyway, let's get this thing unboxed, fam. Moto G, for those of you that don't know, that is Motorola's budget lineup of handsets, but they're really popular because they give you the performance for the correct price. And it's a case that if you give it to your little ones, even if you use it yourself and you drop it, you're not shook that you've dropped a 900 pound investment, you understand? So, boom, this is the thing here. Um, I've already set mine up because we set it up at the event, but uh, just, there you go. You know, this is what man of man is saying. Look how sleek the thing is looking. You understand? It's got a little metallic reflective back kind of thing. You got your camera sensors up in the top left there, fam. Wide angle thing as well with a flash. Um, yeah, you got your fingerprint mounted sensor on the side as well, fam. You got all the bells and whistles you really want here. Um, USB-C port in the bottom as well. The only thing that I kind of don't like about the body of the phone itself is the fact that there's only one speaker in the bottom. We don't get any dual speaker love here. Um, but at 140 pound, come on, yeah? <laughs> you know, something has got to give eventually. But let's get back to that screen. Fam, what are you, what are you guys telling me for the screen quality right now? Is it close enough to the camera? There you go. Yeah. What are you guys really telling me for the screen quality right now? Because see me here? Yeah? I'm not mad at it at all, fam. I'm not mad at the screen at all. Look at, fam, it's even moving correctly. Look at that. 140 pound, you know, 140 pound. Probably moves faster than your 500 pound phone, fam. And I love the fact that Motorola is one of those companies that keeps their version of Android pretty much stock, fam. So you're pretty much getting a Pixel experience with a few Motorola additions. For example, twisting the phone twice turns on the camera. There we go. Hey, you see? turns on the camera and ting and also chopping the phone twice turns on the light there we go we love to see it so it's got the best of google with a couple things that don't necessarily get in the way if you don't need them unless you're twisting your phone on a maza or something now using this phone for the past couple of weeks has actually been okay like i've literally got my twitter here and I mean, it takes a little bit of a while to load in, but once you're loaded in, you're good to go, fam. You're pretty much good to go. You can see a little bit of stutter in there from where it's just downloading the stuff, but now that it's downloaded, yeah, it's, it's not too bad. It's, it's okay. You know, at the price, I'm, I'm constantly looking at the price here, fam. It's, it's not too bad. You can go into your notifications um, when they load up, you know. Uh-huh. Go into there, do a little bit of scrolling, not too bad. If I want to come out of that now, I want to go into Instagram now. Okay, so as man was saying, if man wants to go into Instagram right now, um, yeah, no, nah, it's, it's, it's clear, it's clear. The screen looks nice, it does get quite bright, um, and for such a cheap phone, it's relatively easy to see in direct sunlight, fam. As you can see, it's a sunny day right now, even when man is outside it's quite decent it's only when you try to go mad quick um actually to be honest even when i've tried to go mad quick there it seems to be pretty much handling what i'm throwing at it fam like look at it fam okay so it's stuck now but yeah no it, it seems to be pretty much doing what it needs to do now aside from a bit of social media 
Connectivity is also fine. I've got my NFC payments, I've got my Wi-Fi. My Wi-Fi is actually quite quick. Um, like, I'm quite far away from my Wi-Fi 6 router at the moment. Let's see what it's really saying in terms of speed. Let's get Ookla up. All right, speed testing. <clears throat> Not bad. Not bad. I think I get up to about, actually no, to be honest, in this room, that's not too bad. Now, as I said, sound is, is okay. Um, it, no, oh, okay, let me not lie. The sound does sound quite good. Um, it does get quite loud. It's not obviously the best speaker experience I've ever heard in my life, but then also in the same light, it's not the worst, it definitely, isn't the worst it does get quite loud if it's ringing you'll definitely hear it um, you'll definitely hear what a person on loudspeaker is saying and in that same sentence you'll also be able to be heard by the person you're speaking to on the other side of the phone during either a phone call a video call whatever the call is so in terms of its basic necessity as being a phone it also works and I think I have to say that because on my Samsung, a phone that is substantially more expensive, once I put it onto loudspeaker mode, I, I don't know. That's clearly not what they've invested their money into when designing that specific Samsung Fold 3. But yeah, nah, microphones and sound sounds good. Uh, however, it's single speaker. Um, let me just show you, for example, AI-based person detection, sound and motion detection, day and night mode, cloud and local recording, and built-in speaker system, Wi-Fi or even... So I can literally put one finger over the mic, <laughs> over the speaker grill, and that's it. It basically goes into muted mode. Um, yeah, I mean, it's okay. It's just you're not getting that full kind of cinema experience that virtual surround sound like when you're listening to other phones. Right. This is what we've got going on right here. Now, one thing I had to leave till last was the battery. Boy, battery. Ha, the battery fam, mad. It's actually mad. It's actually, yo, I'm just like, Bro, just believe me when I tell you that you don't have to worry about the battery, yeah? I'm talking eight to nine hours plus. <laughs> that's what that's what man's talking about and I'm gonna leave it there. The first time I got this phone, um, I just left it on standby mode in the corner and I was like, damn, I need to actually make a review on this phone. I took it out and it still had battery on it even though it was continuously Wi-Fi syncing. Fam? It's, it's the battery champion. It is the battery champion. And that must be a combination of the low resolution screen, the kind of slims down mediocre processor in there, and just everything else that's going on in this budget device. Um, it's nice that they put a nice big cell in there. It's quite thick as well. I think 5,000 milliamps, um, definitely probably bigger than my Galaxy Fold 3. <laughs> which again is a much more expensive handset now apart from all that being good uh things that i've noticed a couple caveats with the moto g22 and this is specifically coming from a galaxy z fold 3 is the performance and not the performance in terms of playing games because android games are very well optimized and will literally run on a potato but it's more issues with the ui like for example scrolling is okay um you know checking that google news feed thing is okay but there's a little bit as you can probably see there sometimes there's a little bit of lag um if i go into twitter twitter takes a little bit long to load up sometimes and it's not always kept in memory uh when it does load it can be a little bit stuttery, as you can see there. Just, just a little bit stuttery. Whereas if that was, let's say for example, on my Galaxy Z Fold 3, Twitter is still in memory. Um, if I go to my newsfeed, you know, it's, it's nice and smooth fam. And I mean, those things ain't loaded yet, but once it's loaded, yeah, the experience is nice and smooth. Whereas Twitter on here um, doesn't seem to be very well optimized and you can see 
Like it's not me making it up. Um, this is not one of them things where I'm trying to nitpick. <laughs> I can literally see it visu visually slowing down and stuttering when I try to quickly scroll through Twitter. Um, that's not the end of the world, you know? I can just slowly scroll through Twitter, but no, I mean, nobody scrolls like that through Twitter anyway, let's be honest. <laughs> who does that? I don't know who reads that fast. But yeah, I mean, Instagram is a lot better off, um, a lot more smoother when you're scrolling and stuff. Uh, it's just generally loading up stuff uh, can sometimes take a while with it not being held in memory. And also, you don't have the option to close all the apps that are being held in memory simultaneously. You have to go and close them bit by bit, which is a bit annoying. But um, like I said, that is stuff that you can fix with software. Uh, I like it, guys. I do like it. But the performance for me, um, in terms of social media and stuff like that, video editing was very laggy on this. Um, now, one thing I haven't spoken about is the camera and it's a weird mixed bag because I feel in my mind, so in my testing, the camera is actually quite good. However, because the screen quality is not 1080p, the photos don't look as good as they are. So you might take a picture, put it on Instagram, think that it doesn't look that good yourself, but somebody else that's looking at your photo will say that the photo looks quite decent. Um, which is weird, because then you've got other phones. Uh, for example, I don't know if anyone remembers, way back in the day, you had the HTC M7, yeah? The HTC One M7, they called it. And that had a four megapixel camera. Now, four megapixel camera shots are not gonna look that good. However, because the phone had a 1080p screen and it had a really good screen, the photos looked really good. So people were like, wow, my photos look good. It's only when they got blown up or onto social media or looking at them on a different screen that people were like, whoa, the photos are not as good as they look on the screen. So it's weird that you've got a kind of opposite situation going on here with the Moto G22. But yeah, no, I'm not mad at the photo quality at all. Um, 1080p, 30 frames per second is the highest you're gonna get in terms of video, which is kind of a bummer. But at the same time, that's all you really need for YouTube. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it, guys. I'm gonna, you know, use it a little bit more. I'm not mad at it, but I'd really like some more optimization for my social media apps, my Twitter and my Instagram, so that I'm not waiting for them to load up or for this to post or for that to post or for new content to load in. That's my only caveat really. Apart from that, it's a brilliant phone. If you're not a social media person, you're good to go. If you are, it's a bit sticky, but it is possible.